everybody, and welcome back to the OCB Properties Podcast. My name is Caden Stanley, and I'm here with Melanie Eden. If you guys like what you guys see, go ahead and drop a like, comment. If you guys love what you're seeing, please subscribe, check out our website, suvproperties.com, and share the word and the knowledge that we share every single week. Today, we're here to talk about five-day notices. So, you've got a tenant that's maybe not paying rent, what do you do, right? The first legal process, or I should say step in the process, is a five-day notice. And then, you know, kind of breaking down what that contains and all the things is what we're here to talk about today. So, taking a look at uh, five-day notice, when does that five-day notice timer necessarily start when you come to a five-day notice? There are a couple different ways to serve a five-day notice. I usually cover all of the basis when I serve a five-day notice because I found that if I don't serve them all three ways, by the time we get to court, the tenant can say, well, I never received the notice. So they have a hard time saying they never received the notice if I'm making sure that I post them on their door, mail it to them regular mail, and send it certified mail. We also have a tenant portal, and we post the five-day notice to the tenant portal. So when does the clock start ticking? Seven, well, it starts ticking immediately when you serve the notice. You can't do anything with the notice until seven days because you have to allow for two days of mail service, even though we know that lately mail takes, you know, two weeks to go two blocks lately. Yeah, snail mail, right? Yeah, yep. exactly. So when it comes to five-day notices, where are typical areas that you see that maybe people mess up on five-day notices or you're seeing mistakes when it comes to five-day notices, whether it's in the beginning or when it finally gets to court in a five-day notice? Uh, serving the five-day notice, you have to be very specific about what you're accounting for. It is either rent, not late fees, unless you say in your lease that late fees from prior months become rent, or water, but you have to have them line itemed out. If you include late fees on your five day notice, be prepared, at least in Wisconsin, to have that thrown out. So for the most part, when we serve a five day notice, it's a rent, one line item for rent, and if they have unpaid water, even if their water bill is late, but it's not quite due yet, so let me give you an example. Water is, their water bill is due on February 15th, but they're already late on their rent and it's February 5th. You can't include the fact that their water bill is late because it's not due until the 15th. So yeah. in theory, they're not late on your water bill, but you can include the prior quarter if they're behind for that. So you have to break that bill apart. But if they're already late on the rent, just serve them for the five day and get that clock ticking on the five day and be very specific, but do not include late fees on there. Uh, most court commissioners will throw that out. And then you get to start all over again with all new legal fees and all new service. Got it, okay. And I know that we've talked a little bit and kind of mentioned it here too about just the steps and I guess necessarily what are the steps to serving a five day. I know we've talked that we kind of public, you know, put it in a couple different places and things like that when it comes to serving a five day, correct? In the state of Wisconsin, when you serve a five day in person, you have to go three times in two days. And I have gone to court where I have served it the three times in the two days and the, and the third time you can post it on their door. However, if one of those three services doesn't happen after 5 p.m., I've had court commissioners throw it out. Even though you've done all the other steps, you've sent it certified mail, you've sent it regular mail, you've served it three times in two days, if one of those services is not after 5 p.m., because the answer is, well, what if they were at work? Work nine to five, yeah, that they were at work. Okay, but then it was posted on the door and I sent it the other two way, case dismissed. So make sure when you're doing one of your services that it's after 5 p.m. And or it could be thrown, it doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to be thrown out, but you just need the one commissioner that says, eh, this doesn't work for me, you can start over. Agreed, yeah, and that's why typically we, on the first day, serve somewhere in the morning time. Uh, we come back, you know, or somewhere around 8 a.m., then we normally come back around after 5, just after 5 p.m., and then the following day we try to get there around noon so that way we're covering all different time zones. All three days. different time zones, that's right. So that's when you do the personal service. Then you send it regular mail, just regular snail mail, 
copy of it and then you also send it certified so that there is a paid receipt that they have to sign for, no one will sign for it. It's very odd that anybody signs for it and they will not go down to the post office to pick it up. But there's in the court commissioner's office, they can, they have access to the USPS website on the, the signatures for those paid receipts to see if, because the post delivery person will also try to serve it three times yeah. before they stop doing it. So really, this person has been served by you three times, once in the mail, three times by the postal service before it gets to court. Then once it gets to court, then when they have a court date that's set up, then it rolls back again to serving them three times in two days. So you've got a lot of notices that people say, I didn't get it. You would be surprised at how many times I didn't get it gets them a new court date. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And so looking at the actual five-day notice itself, maybe the format or the structure, is there a standard form? And if there is, like obviously we have our form, what does it actually look like, right? And you said line by line, it's kind of described out, broken, depending on what action needs to be due and things like that. Every state has their legal description on uh, your five-day notice about paying rent. You want to make sure that you have your state's notice. We buy ours from Wisconsin Legal Blank, uh, and that way we are always up to speed with, in the event the state of Wisconsin changes their form, we have the correct form for service. Don't make one up on your own. You are guaranteed to lose if you make that up. You want to make sure that you get the form that is drafted by an attorney for your state. Yeah, and here in the state of Wisconsin, <clears throat> Wisconsin Legal Blank or the WRA are the two most popular and two most common because like you said, right on the bottom, it says drafted by whether it was this attorney or that attorney. So those are the two best references, at least in Wisconsin, that you can use and are the most common when it comes to landlords. Thanks everybody for watching. Tune in next week when we take a look at 28 day notices. Uh, this has been a fun topic to talk about five day notices. I'm sure that you never want to serve one. And I wish you the best of luck that you never have to serve one. So go to our website, suvproperties.com. Email us. We are real estate professionals looking to help spread the knowledge of real estate around the world. Let us help you make money in the world of real estate. Thanks, See you next guys. week.